five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is Paul Andrigo of realestatepodcastshow.com. Uh, I've got a very, very special guest today, and I want to make sure that you guys are listening very closely to this because this may be uh, the moment that changes everything in terms of Canadian real estate uh, going forward because this particular gentleman uh, is part of something that is, uh, I, would, I would call revolutionary uh, for our system. I've been in the system for 22 years in Canadian real estate. Uh, we've moved pretty much at a snail's pace in terms of technology. Uh, Ontario was the last province to get the e-signatures in, uh, and I was chomping at the bit for years before that. So uh, I hope that we're going to be uh, in Ontario anyways, ahead of the curve on this next thing. But I want to welcome to the show Eric Bryant, uh, also known as uh, The Real Estate Coach on Twitter. Uh, but thank you, Eric, for joining me. Uh, and of course, uh, most importantly, your um, uh, official title is the Director of Operations for North America. For, yeah, for Open America and O-P-E-N-N, since that needs to be said. So thanks so much for joining me. Two ends, yeah. Yep. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you. And thanks for setting me up with no pressure. That was no, great. No, 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 no. Again, obviously, because I've heard you talk about this, um, and of course, I've been sort of, you know, paying attention to uh, the Korea notices and everything else. Uh, I guess maybe we'll just start with, uh, you know, from, because I think you're the best one to, to do this without any misconceptions. Um, and, and just to make it, you know, as, 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 as direct as possible. So tell me exactly uh, what it is that is happening right now and, and how it's going to affect, uh, again, obviously those of us here in Canada. Absolutely. Um, CREA and OPEN have come to an agreement to pilot a, a, a process with our product uh, on realtor.ca. Our product is an offer management system. So what we have effectively done is automated the current version of offer and acceptance, put it into software, and allowed for a number of things, but for the most part, three main points, <laughs> three, that was good, three main points, uh, transparency, equality, and efficiency. Okay. So the, tr the first two are for the benefit of the consumer on behalf of the agent. The third is a benefit to the agent to help the consumers. Um, and what happened is once that announcement hit that you spoke of earlier, there started to, there started to, uh, become some misconceptions. Mm -hmm. And I just reached out and I just wanted to set everybody's mind at ease and, and let everybody know that this particular partnership between CREA and OPEN was designed to benefit both the consumer and the industry yeah. through this process. Um, that transparency has been something that has been so desired for such a long time by the consumer, mm -hmm. questioned, I'll, you know, questioned by the industry as yeah. to whether or not transparency is the right thing to have, but we're not seeing any doubt in the mind of the consumer. So we wanted to put together this pilot of a product that we've been using for six years in Australia, New Zealand, and has been very success, have been very successful with to show the Canadian marketplace the value of this automation. And again, the value is three part. It's not simply the transparency, although that is the one getting all the press. Mm -hmm. There's also an equality piece in this because yeah. we have introduced software into the process the, and we've reduced the level of manual um, participation or human bias. We're able to take a real hard look at some of the problems we've had in the past in the industry around equality because software doesn't see race, creed, color, sexual orientation. It sees terms and conditions mm -hmm. and dollar amount. Yep. Um, and then the efficiency play. Why, for whatever reason, let's, I don't want to argue it or debate it. For some reason, this particular piece of the process wasn't automated mm -hmm. and put into the e-transaction phase. Yeah. So we were literally going through an electronic transaction, jumping off at transaction, excuse me, at offer management, mm -hmm. and then getting back on at transaction management. And that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So we fill that version, we fill that piece of the pie, that void, and we play nice with all the other technologies. We're agnostic when it comes to that. We have APIs that will pick up data from, let's say, a, a showing service, if that's where a consumer finds the interest in uh, making an offer, mm -hmm. and we'll pass off the data to a transaction management system. And the reason we've done that because through our pilots, the brokers have made it clear they don't want to change 
their showing service or their transaction management service mm -hmm. in order to accommodate offer management. Yeah. So we determined that we will just play nice and we'll mm -hmm. take the data and pass it off. So by automating it, we can put it on somebody's phone or their tablet. We can make it 24, 7, 365. We can open it up worldwide. Mm -hmm. If somebody in, you know, uh, Dubai wants to make an offer, they mm -hmm. can do it on their phone and, mm -hmm. and, and the participants can all be notified and be completely aware through a simple dashboard of what's going on. Having information is always a good thing. Yeah. So, you know, when, when we take off our industry hat and we become a consumer ourselves, because we always were consumers on a number of, you know, products other than real estate, mm -hmm. we realize transparency is certainly something that we all want. We all desire as a consumer of whatever product we want to know more about it. We all, we all check out reviews on, on products and how many stars does it have and what are people saying? Mm -hmm. So information when you're purchasing for the most part, the largest purchase of your life, yep. the more information you have, the better. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. And by putting it into software, we've given the consumer the opportunity to be educated and, and understand where they are in the process. It's, it's uh, overall, it's a fantastic thing for the consumer and the industry is really going to benefit as it has in Australia. Well, that's, I guess that's where I want to go here. And of course, again, I want to make this as conversational as possible. And I want to be able to uh, have anybody who is listening again around the world or specifically here in Canada, um, understand it without having to know the industry jargon. So that's, yes. uh, that's, that's one of the things that you've already done very well, Eric. And I appreciate that. Uh, because again, if it gets too much into, uh, you know, having to know something about how showings work, uh, and how offers, you know, go back and forth. And, and of course, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm from, uh, you know, a time where uh, I, I remember everything being written down, including clauses. If you couldn't pass the courses unless you actually physically, uh, in the early 2000s, anyways, if you could not write those clauses out, uh, you know, you'd have to remember some of it, but it was it was that it was that specific. So um, the technology, again, has gone as far as I'm concerned, not just in a linear fashion, but more of an exponential um, you know, mode. And obviously with everything that's happening, uh, all the, you know, all the incredible uh, changes in technology, uh, you know, of course, even right down to the, uh, the big announcement today, as we're live on this thing with uh, Twitter being officially uh, bought by, you know, Mr. Musk, a former Canadian, by the way, not for very long, but for a while. Uh, so all these changes going on and how the consumer is going to, uh, again, understand this. So um, without, of course, I mean, I don't know how much you can go into this uh, at this time. And of course, if you can't, you can't. But uh, you're specifically, you know, letting letting us know that this is going to be um, um, a specific um, uh, specifically more so that it is specifically not an auction. Uh, and it's definitely more about the um, uh, about the, the way this uh, the way this uh, software is going to be designed around, you know, our, our existing systems. So is there right. a way that you could uh, explain, you know, to me, of course, and, and again, to anyone listening, um, if there is a, sort of a, uh, a template that 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 exists right now, uh, some sort of an example, because the one that I've sort of just automatically gravitated to, and, and maybe it was false, uh, was the, you know, the live auctions that are happening in Australia. So is there any sort of um, sort of live versions? Or is there any sort of like uh, real time um, examples of this anywhere that? Uh, sure. Uh, actually, we're very fortunate in that in Australia, there are two distinct ways to sell property. It's split about 50-50 at, at, right about now. Yeah. First one is what you just described. It's an auction. It's a straight auction. Yeah. The other is called private treaty, which mirrors our offer and acceptance in North America. Right. So we have both products. We have open negotiation, which is for the auctions and open offers which is for the offer and acceptance. Okay. We only brought the offer, the open offers product to the North American shores, but what it does show you is over six years, we have an, a, a deep education or, or deep experience in both aspects of what, you know, how to purchase a home. There's, there are two very distinct features of an auction that do not apply to offer and acceptance. The first one is the, at the end of the at the end of the clock, the hammer falls and the highest bid wins. So that's 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 a huge piece. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there are no terms and conditions in an auction, which are 
a big part of offer and acceptance or what we do currently. Yep. So those two features apply to our negotiation product, but not our offers product. Okay. Um, and so by bringing that product versus the other, we, we've set the market up for really riding the same train just automated that they've always done. That's for the industry and the consumer. Mm -hmm. For example, there's going to be two ways to begin the process. Number one would be an agent creating the product in the back end. They have an address that they can share. They share it with a, a, the buyer's agent and the buyer. Mm -hmm. Click this link, come on into the system and start your offer and acceptance process. Okay. So uh, that can happen very easily through a shared experience, like an email or whatever it might be. The other feature would be an, a make an offer button. And that's what we'll take, that will be put on the um, realtor.ca website. Okay. Yep. That make an offer button will have a URL underneath it that comes the sa to the same place. So you can get there two different ways. Okay. Um, but the, the reason that that's applicable and I'm sorry, I'm getting derailed because my dog won't you stop. You know what? Barking. I was actually going to say, I, I don't know if that's yours or mine, because I, I literally could not shut mine up uh, five minutes before we started. <laughs> so uh, it was going to be one of us. So it had to be you, which is fine with me. You're the guest. Uh, yeah. It, can I take a break and go get, get her to stop Absolutely. The, the, the whole point of this is grab a, you know, take care of business, grab a drink if you need one, come back when you're ready. Yeah. All right. I'll be right back. Once in the system, I there we go. There we go. Once into the system, either through the make an offer button or through the the address. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's all right. This is part of the bloopers. No, nobody, uh, nobody complains about this. By the way, I, I I like the unfiltered part of of this podcast. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I'm, I'm I'm very much about peeling back the layers. Pull it down. Pull it down. Okay, here we go. Now I'll lock her in here. She can't do anything. She 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 just wants the spotlight, Eric. It, it, it can't be all about you. You know you know my dog. <laughs> I know I know a lot of them. I have to in this in this job. I, I meet a new one just about every day, so I, I better I better be good around them or else. Well, this has been not, this has been fun if it hasn't been anything else that's for dang sure <laughs> yeah good so we were i think we were talking about something uh just a minute ago we were talking about um, the two different ways that that the uh that the consumer can engage the experience uh and you were talking about it being on the listing uh or email to someone like a zoom link and then obviously the make an offer button that's right on the listing so i think that's so far what we've covered nothing nothing too heavy so no matter which way you come in, either yeah. by getting the link from the agent or the make an offer button, which will be the part displayed on realtor.ca, yeah. which is the um, the CREA uh, partnership, you come into the system, you get your own dashboard. Each participant has a, a view based on their level of permissions. You'll be able to see and understand what's going on. For example, if I am the buyer or the buyer's agent, I will have a view that shows me how many offers have been made, what the hierarchy of those offers were, the timing of those offers, yeah. and where I stand okay. within that hierarchy. Now, I might see the number, mm -hmm. and I might not. Okay. And that depends on the province you're in, because yeah. each one has different regulations. Although, fortunately for us, and for the, I think for the industry, each province has taken a good hard look at what they can and can't put into our system and mm -hmm. making adjustments. Or contemplating making adjustments which i think is really forward thinking of them i'm glad i'm glad you're bringing that up because this is actually a 12 part series that this is part of i'm i'm going from province to province to try to get the right people in that province uh you know sort of the big the big deals um the ones in charge of this kind of thing i'm trying to get them to uh, join me here uh, and get their you know get their two cents uh uh, it, or more uh, on, on how it's going. So I, I appreciate you saying that as well, because even if you're watching this uh, and I'm trying to give Ontario specifics, um, there is no, you know, Ontario specifics per se yet. Uh, it's, it, again, so, it sounds like there's Canadian 
um, you know, Canada wide variances in, in how this is all going to get laid out. So I, again, I appreciate you bringing that up and you don't have to go too far into details. I, I get that that's probably going to take a while. Yeah, just know that there's differences. We've accommodated for those differences with what I would call toggles. So the, the, the agent representing the seller or listing agent has the ability to turn things on and off based on the province they're in. Um, so we've given that, you know, we've made that adjustment while we grow through the regulatory system. Um, but the real important part is that you get more information. So even if I don't see the number, I'll see that my offer is currently third in the hierarchy. Yeah. And I can work together with my agent to determine whether or not I want to counter offer or make another offer, which is just part of the same process we do today. Yeah. Now we just have a little bit more information to do so. So we get to see that. Um, we'll, we'll see the number of offers that are in there. There are There's an opportunity to observe, which is really a powerful feature for everyone. Um, the, the, the listing agent can share that URL with someone in the neighborhood or interested parties, so, you know, uh, people who want to move into that neighborhood and are wondering about what's going on. So people can come in as an observer, get a limited view. Are you suggesting that someone would go to an open house just because they were nosy about their neighbors? Oh, are you suggesting that? Because because that because there's there's books written on this, of course, as you know. Um, yeah. So I, I love that you're bringing that up because that's completely a marketing discussion. And I know we're not going to get into marketing and or blockchain today. Uh, those are other episodes. But uh, what you just said there, I think, is a big thing for anybody listening um, to know that your house or sorry, your neighbor's house three doors down, um, you're not just going to be getting secondhand information about, you know, 75 offers last night. Um, you'll actually be able to, you know, sort of see it happening. Um, and again, add that level. And that's why within the circles of real estate in, in Toronto and Ontario, um, the big debate is, you know, the transparency and, and, and you know, is it really going to change the transparency element? Um, and I feel myself personally, and I, I might be one of three uh, in Toronto that feels it's a good thing. Uh, and the other two went missing. And that, that's how I feel like when I talk about this, like I might be the only one um, that is, you know, very pro this, which is why we're here. Um, so thanks for bringing what you just brought, you know, what you brought up about, um, you know, being able to, again, be more connected because everybody wants, you know, in, in, in Toronto and probably every other province listening, everybody wants to know the sold prices and everybody wants to know the behind the scenes um, of, of offer night. They, they all want to know. They're, that's what they're talking about at their kitchen tables, uh, whether or not they admit to it at the parties and, uh, and on Facebook community groups, every single one. Uh, I don't care where you live. There's, a, there's someone talking about, uh, you know, the house that sold down the street for too much or too little or whatever. And they should know. They absolutely should well, they, know. They, they, the they're they're going to know anyway. So why not give, again, the best, uh, <coughs> excuse me, why not give the best access to information uh, about all the details? Because the sold price, I mean, that's not going to be hidden for long. That's usually out there even before the sold signs out these days. People know anyways. They, they, you know, they have access to that. So it's the behind the scenes stuff that, again, I think um, your system is going to help, I think, you know, shed some light on that um, and take it out of the shadows, which is it's in the shadows right now. So, something as simple as a house can sell for $500,000. And this house can sell for $500,000, but one had 20 offers on it, one had three offers on it. That's a significant difference. So yeah. just because we know it sold for 500,000, it's a difference having all the information or more information uh, so that you can make an educated decision. And it's, it's nice to know that you have social proof that there are 20 people, 20 real people because they're vetted to come into the system. They're only allowed in with a real estate agent at their side who's done the vetting. So these people are real. These yep. offers are real. You don't have to be concerned about somebody coming in with ghost offers. Yeah. It's the 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 system is designed to protect all the participants. And that's one of the reasons that we're moving forward with this. And that's why CREA and realtor.ca are so behind it. Because as you know, though CREA is an industry um, uh, uh, an industry organization, they're very consumer centric. And of course, realtor.ca is heavily consumer centric because it's what drives their viewership. It's what drives their numbers. 
Yeah. So in, in providing something that's great for the consumer and very good for the industry, I think that they're big, they're, they're, uh, they're able to say that they're supporting both of their um, membership. They're the, those who um, they ask, they answer to. Absolutely right. And again, that's why it's, I think it's such an important thing for people to understand, um, you know, where this is going. And of course, the fact that it's being rolled out uh, again, I don't know how secretive it all is. And if you can't say, don't say, um, but I know it's obviously in selected areas um, across Canada. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So um, obviously that part, uh, again, where those areas are and, and how they're chosen, uh, I presume has a lot to do with, um, you know, how they're going to be rolled out in, I guess, bigger cities uh, and nationwide. Uh, and is there, uh, by chance, Eric, is there a sort of a, um, a complete rollout date, um, a tentative one? It's, it's really it's just beginning we're in the integration phase. So we, we created the partnership. We started the, the, the partnership. We finalized it just two weeks ago, I believe, okay. uh, is when this all hit. We're integrating now. So our technical teams are working on the integration of the product, uh, lining up the participants. So you, you should hear more, and I'll certainly keep you informed as to that. You should hear start to hear more in about three to four weeks. Okay. Uh, participants lined up at that point as far as the boards and the brokers. So you need a board and a broker in order to pilot this. Um, th that'll start coming out soon. And then we believe by summer, uh, by the beginning of Q3, it will be, um, we can make a decision as to whether or not it will be on every listing on realtor.ca, which is really the, 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 the outcome everybody wants. We want to be able to see every listing have uh, give the consumer that transparency and equality that they deserve. And then again, you can imagine as a, as a professional, as an agent or a broker, if you're dealing with 10, 15, 20 offers, you know, managing those offers in a fair and compliant way is difficult even for the very best agents in the marketplace. It's, a disaster. it's not that hard for software. It's a disaster when you're dealing with, 20 bidders and, and, and I've been on both sides, buying and selling sides. Um, and you're trying to, uh, you know, keep track of everything and inform everybody in real time. You just can't, I mean, you, you, you'll try and everybody will find out, but there's always somebody's going to be pissed off. Um, yeah. sometimes it's me, sometimes it's somebody else, but, um, the human element of it is, 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 is so full of pitfalls. So the fact that, again, this will make that, uh, you know, equalized. Uh, and, and as you said, I think, um, you know, a, a, maybe a level of fairness um, because it's happening in real time and it can't, uh, you know, it can't be manipulated. It, like it's, it's, you know, the, 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 the offers registered, um, you know, again, who it is and, and, and not, you don't, sorry, you don't know who it is, you know, you, you know what it is, depending on where it is. Um, and then of course, again, you, you, you sort of, are able to say, okay, there are 16 offers um, because in, in Toronto anyways, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a roll of the dice when you go and bid on a property that you're going to be given uh, depending on this, literally depending on the booking software. Um, I know it was um, I think it was showing time that we used to use that would give uh, a link that we could actually send out to people. Um, and I don't know if, you know, and again, it was only selected offices that were using that. So the fact that this will, again, allow us, as you said, to send a link out to people uh, who are curious and of course, the ones who are serious. Uh, That's right. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the, the, the system itself is designed for fairness. I mean, that's why it was designed actually by two brokers and a, a venture capitalist in Australia. So you can, you can literally say this was for agents by agents. And one of the premises of this product, and I think it's really important to the industry participants, this product was built yes. for the participation of an agent slash broker on each side of the transaction. And that's really important to us because it's part of our core principles being owned by two brokers. A lot of the market currently works around a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, philosophy where the agent may or may not be a part of the process. It doesn't matter to the software whether they are or they aren't. To us, they must be. When they go through the process, they, if they we ask them to tell us who their agent is, and obviously we can provide a drop-down menu of every agent in that marketplace. Yep. 
if they choose, if they say I'm not represented currently, then we say pick one, mm -hmm. choose one, and we give them some background and let them know some education history about who the agents are, so they can then choose one to participate. But they've got to have one to come into the process and begin and begin. So that's a huge difference between the what you would see as um, other software, competitive softwares. No, uh, to my knowledge, in Canada, there's no one else that's creating an offer management platform that requires the participation of an agent. For the most part, they actually, they promote the fact that you don't need an agent when you come in and use our software because we provide you all the tools that an agent would have otherwise provided you. Yeah. So that's that's a big reason why Korea is behind us is because they're they're pro-agent. They're supposed to be. That's what they their general function is to be pro-agent. And here in the United States, we have the backing of NAR. Yeah. We're part of the. We're part of uh, two of their accelerator programs, one in Australia and now one in Canada, and we look forward to being a part of their 2023 uh, uh, accelerator in the U.S. So, we we um we're very proud of, of the fact that we are by you know created by agents for agents. So and and I love that you're doing this again because this is probably why I could keep you here for an hour, but I won't. Um, <laughs> I love the backstories of everything. Um, music uh, as you can see i've got my albums up there uh movies um i've always sort of wanted to be when i can um sort of the scorsese of podcasting in terms of his attention to d storytelling so i love those backstories of char characters today you're the character i'm doing the backstory on uh, whether you like it or not so the fact that you said uh, this program came from two brokers. Um, and again, I, I, I wish I got to know you before, but um, your Twitter handle is the real estate coach. So clearly your background, uh, you know, is in or, or, or is or was uh, in real estate um, as well, like, you know, working with people. Yeah. Um, I've held a license actually for 30 years. I never actually used it as an active license, but oh, I was okay. a technology coach for that period of time. So I would work with brokers and brands and agent teams on all the technologies as they came down the pipe, going all the way back to the internet itself and websites and blogs and yeah. social media and CRMs, whatever it was. My job yeah. was to teach people how to use them, create a curriculum yeah. for brokers and brands, and, and then I would move on as a, as a coach and consultant. So I've, I've been in the space for a long time, understanding Absolutely. the value of technology to it. And Open was actually one of my customers. So I, I looked at their technology, I saw it and I went, holy crap, this is it. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is what, cause you know, we all have a person, this is important. We all have a personal history of problems when it comes to this issue, when it comes to transparency. For me, it was, a, it was one of my daughters who said, came to me crying and said, I don't understand. We didn't get the house. I said, what happened? She goes, we, we put in our offer, but they accepted an offer that was $15,000 more. Oh. And she said, and here comes the, the phrase. Yeah. She said, if I had only known, we would have offered another 15,000 to be competitive because oh, we man. really wanted the house. And that's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of phrase that's spoken all over the U S wow. and Canada every day. That's, if, I mean, that's, that's, that's the opener right there. That's, that's it. That's, 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 um, uh, I forget what the guy's name is, but he was listening to Eric Clapton playing Layla in the studio. And he said, you're playing it wrong. You need to put the solo in the front of the song. And then, boom, it clicked. Because now if you listen to Layla, it starts off with the solo, not, That's right. not any singing. And that was because he was in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the booth. And he said, just switch it around a little bit. So your moment there, that was this moment. So, uh, again, yep. A, the fact that, again, you're talking about your daughter. Mine just turned 17. We just went out for her birthday dinner last night. Uh, we're talking about real estate. I'm trying to give her some unfair advantage because I know what I'm doing, but I can't. And, and neither, obviously, could you at that moment. You couldn't change what she went through. But I guess once this does come in, and, and, and I'm curious to find out, um, is the U.S. adapting it any quicker than us? No, actually, Canada's Canada's a little faster. Okay, which is right. which okay. is kind of funny because we came to the U.S. about a month before Canada, but Canada, uh, uh, thanks to I think really kudos to Korea for seeing the value of it. They saw that we had joined the accelerator program yeah. with the Canadian Reach program, and they reached out and asked for a demo. 
when we demoed it, it just rode from there because they realized, you know, the potential of what it uh, what it could mean to what's going on in Canada right now with the yeah. Home Buyers Bill of Rights and yeah. Yeah. the sentiment from the consumers around that transparency. It's it's so vital. It's so important so that, you know, no dad wants to hear his daughter cry because they missed out on a house that was perfect for them, you know, and you don't have to, there's no reason to, mm -hmm. we have technology, we have the ability. Um, it evens the playing field. It brings that fairness in and there's no reason to go spend $500,000 without knowing, you know, in the darkness. Yeah. That's just silly. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. No, Eric, again, I think, I think again, you nailed uh, why I wanted to do this today. Um, and I really appreciate you taking the time to help explain it uh, to those of us who are listening and learning, because for me, it's it's a constant combination of both. Uh, while I sit here on this end, uh, I'm still trying to sort of comprehend all these changes. And I hope as I do, uh, so do, you know, the people who are out there listening. Um, but like I said before, this is going to be, I hope, an ongoing series. Um, and I'd love to have you back again to, um, you know, sort of... Um, clarify things as uh, you know as as we get closer to um you know making it a reality for for all of us here uh those of us listening in ontario uh, in real estate consumers and, and of course across the country so i'll come back anytime um if there are if there are questions from the consumer side i'm, I'm happy to answer that from the industry side which i think has more mystery yeah. in it than the consumer side um i know that there are people out there that would would like to keep hiding things. That's part of what their go to business, their, their go to market strategy. But I know there's a lot yeah. more that that realize that this is really the way to be doing this to give people the 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 transparency and that fairness, that equity, that level playing field. It's great, by the way. It's been a fantastic um, uh, outcome in Australia, bringing realtors and consumers back together where there was this big mistrust in Australia and to some, to some degree exists here in the U S yeah. it really solidified the, um, the importance of the agent in the process and created a relationship between them. That's really, it's grown uh, in some of our better States in Australia, we're at 30% adoption. So three out of every 10 homes are sold with our product. It's just a beautiful thing. Wow. Okay. Well, that's again, to me, that's uh Again, the, the, the beginning of this conversation that is like any great work of art is a, it's a work in progress. Um, so I'll be looking forward to hearing more from you. And again, you've been amazing from the moment I contacted you 15 minutes later uh, of not knowing who I was or what I do. Um, you were kind enough to say you'll join me uh, for the podcast and it really means a lot to me. So thank you so much, Eric, for joining me. My pleasure, but now you have to tell my wife I'm amazing because that's where that's an important is thing. Is that how this works? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, Are you I'll send her the some video. Brownie, some brownie points for this. That'd be great. I'll, I'll send her the video of what you said <laughs> uh, at the end and uh, <laughs> I'll make sure she understands. And thanks for having your dog as the guest star um, oh, yeah, in between you know, as well. That to me makes it, you know, that's what makes this all real. I hear you. So I thanks again for joining me and uh, I appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Eric.